Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another Japanese lesson. Today we're going to be looking at scenes from the film Millennium Actress and looking at some of the Japanese that um, goes on in the film. We'll be looking at the vocabulary, we'll be looking at the grammar and we'll be listening to the dialogue so we can get some listening practice. So with this first clip, this is from the beginning and the end of the film because the beginning and the end are the same. Um, if you don't want to watch because of spoilers, then you don't have to, but it doesn't give much away anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this clip without the subtitles and then afterwards we're going to go through the Japanese and the dialogue with the English translation and break down the sentences to see what things mean. So without further ado, let's begin with the first clip. Okay, so was there anything in that that you understood? Yes, that's great. If there's not, then we're going to go and explain it in the next slide. Okay, so along with um, going through the slide, hopefully I'll be just drawing some notes on the screen so um, I can highlight the bits that I am discussing to help it easy, to make it easier to understand what's going on. As you can see with the dialogue, it will be all in um, Japanese in terms of hiragana, katakana and kanji. There won't be any romanji. Um, however, if you can't read all the kanji, um, now and then I will put some notes above the kanji, the furigana, um, explaining what how to read it with um, hiragana characters. So if there's a kanji you don't recognize, don't worry, I will try and go over them. Um, okay, so for example, this iku. I won't do this for all the kanji, but um, new kanji that comes up or kanji that is quite complicated, I will just write over the top so you understand what's being said. Okay, so what we'll do is, um, okay, great. So um, we'll just see if the clip can play. So while I go through each dialogue, we can take a listen. Okay, it doesn't seem to work. Okay, no worries. We'll just go and I'll say it out loud. So the guy says, "Doshitemo iku no ka." So that's translated here. Must you go? But you could say, "We got iku." 
which is to go. Noka is making it a question. Ikunoka, must you go? This is quite informal when you say that. Um, if you want to say, are you going? Ikemasu ka? Um, in a more formal way. Doshitemo is saying, like, must you, you know, do something, for example. Um, doshite, why? And te temo is like, no matter what, or even if. So it's almost like, yeah, um, no matter what or no matter why, or will you go? Ikunoka? Um, here is a bit one. Yakusoku. Yakusoku. Um, yakusoku shite. So let's look at one sentence at a time. Yakusokushita comes from yakusokusuru, which means to promise. This is the past tense. Yakusokushita. Um, no yo. This no is an explanatory particle. You'd add after the verb just to say, well, this is my reason for going. Yakusokushita. I promise. Yakusokushita da yo. You can also contract that not into a n. Yakusokushita da yo. I promised. Um, kanarazu. So that's um, no matter what. Kanarazu. Ka. Na. Ra. Zu. Ai ni kute. So going to meet. Um, if you take a verb and you change it from to its mass stem which means you'd say I must so we've turned I must to I and you add ni iku it means you're going to do an action so for example um, the stem of the mass stem of taberu is tabemasu if you say tabe get rid of the mass tabe ni iku it means I'm going to eat if I say um, for example um, nomu um, nomi mas to drink nomi ni iku means going to go for a drink so that's a sentence pattern that you can just remember for the future um, kanarazu ai ni iku te this te is a is used when you have quoted speech in this case this is the quoted speech kanarazu ai ni iku so it said um I said no matter what I'd meet him so that was um, the promise that was made and that's why that's quoted te that's the yakusoku um, before I carry on I'd like to try and do a mnemonic with yakusoku maybe to help you remember the promise so for example this is how fun you can get with mnemonics yakusoku you could say a yaki sok you promise with a yaki sok so both you and your friend you put your Hands into a yaki sock, um, each have your own yaki sock, and you shake hands while your hand is in the yaki sock. And that's how you promise. That sounds really weird, but however, it, the weirder you make it and the more you imagine the story, the easier it will be to remember the reading without having to constantly memorize it. So maybe try that with kanarazu. See if you can come up with an interesting mnemonic for that. So the next line, we have ikereba. Nido tomo modotte kurenai dazo. So, ikereba, if you go, or if you do go, can go, nido tomo modotte kurenai. So, this nido tomo nai is another sentence pattern you can say you won't be able to go again. I've translated it here, it's translated here as won't be able to come back. However, it's not quite like that, but it still works as a translation. Let me explain. So, nido means twice. Um, ichido means once. If you say nido tomo, nido tomo is almost saying, okay, twice, nai. You won't be able to do something twice. So, if you have the verb in the middle, um, it's almost saying that you won't be able to do this twice, suggesting you've done it once already and you won't be doing it twice. Um, so, for example, in this case, it's you won't be able to return a second time, implying that you've returned the first time, you've come back from going wherever you went or doing what you did, and you won't be doing that again. Um, so, you could say, for example, Nido tomo renraku shite kure nai in dazo. 
Ah, so someone's saying, um, don't contact me ever again. Don't contact me again. Um, okay, so there's modoru. That means to reserve. Um, to return, sorry. Return. Modoru. Okay. Um, ikereba comes from iku. Again, we've got iku, iku. Ikereba means if you do something, this will happen. Um, so yeah. By the way, we get ikereba by changing the k u um, hiragana to an e hiragana. In this case, ku, the corresponding e hiragana is ke. Iku, ikereba. Then you add the reba. Ikereba. Um, actually, interestingly, this ikereba doesn't come from iku, it comes from ikeru. Means you can go ikeru. Um, iku. If you're going to do the bat form for iku, be ikeba. Now, um, the difference between that is iku is suggesting if you go, ikeraba is if you do have the potential to go. If you is saying a potential can go, if you can go, if you do go, it's, it's got it's it's different to just going. It's a potential, the possibility can go. Um, so if you think of that difference, it will help dif distinguish between iku and ikeru. Um, slightly different meaning. And um, yeah, so over here we have arigato, which is obviously, well, thanks. Um, the guy says, iku na, iku nai de kure, ore wa, ore wa kimi no koto. Okay, um, by now, hopefully, you know that's read as iku. We've had it four times now. <laughs> um, here is our ore, um, our masculine way of saying I. Um, ikuna is a strong command. Um, you just have the normal verb that you'd find in the dictionary and you add na. For example, if I take this verb, modoru, I go modoru na, don't return. Or if I take this um this one, yakusoku suru, yakusoku suru na, don't promise. Um, it's a very order, it's a strong order. Um, ikanai dekure. Now you can see this is translated both as don't go, but they're both different in meaning. Ikanai dekure is more of a softer tone. Um, you might hear an anime um, character say, nakanai de, or im ikanai de, or or something, something with naide, um, usually naka naide or wasure naide, don't forget wasure naide, naka naide, don't cry. It's not a strong command, it's more, um, there's more um, emphaticness with it, let's say. So, ika naide kure, don't go. Um, ore wa, ore wa kimi no koto. Um, this is implying I love you. Um, usually with confessions, if someone's going to confess their love, they might say, um, for example, watashi wa mm, some mm no koto, mm, meaning the name of the person, or um, you, mm no koto suki da yo, which would be the full sentence, which is not fully said. Before we carry on to the next next line, we've got kure coming up twice, kure. So kure suggests that something is returning unto you. Um, the opposite of that is ageru. Ageru is you giving something out. Kureru is something coming to you. So in this case, ikanai de kure is suggesting don't go, don't go for my sake or don't go for my sake, if you like. Modotte kure nai, don't, you won't be able to return to me. So, you doing something for me. So, that's the kure. And then, obviously, ageru is something you're doing as a speaker for the listener. Okay, so we're going to move on to the last sentence. And Chiyoko says, Datte atashi, ano hito o oikaketeru, watashi ga suki nanda mono. So, um, we could say that there is after all in this case. Um, that there. Um, again, the te is the same te as uh, up here. It's quoting. 
something that's said before that that is from this you have that at the end of a sentence and whatever was it's implying the sentence was from it's quoting that um so that te. um so like that. but it's 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 kind of because it's used so often it's it can just have a varied meaning um, in this case it means after all atashi comes from watashi um feminine way of saying i ano hito um o oi kaketeru watashi ga sorry we got no space ski nanda mono so i guess it could be almost as if he's she's she's following off what the guy said but changing the meaning let's just look at the meaning though how do we break this sentence down let's look at from here this is our main clause our main part of the sentence watashi ga suki nanda mono um i like um mono means thing so the thing that i like um suki nanda is suki now like um the no yo the nanda nanda at the end of suki is giving an explanatory tone it's her telling the the listeners the watchers of the the film um that this is what she likes this is her explanation um so that's what it means there's no translation as such for it in english but in japanese it's without it it wouldn't have the explanatory tone that's needed it feel that something's missing so watashi ga suki nanda mono the thing that i like what is the thing that you like it's ano hito o oikaketeru so that's our second sentence ano hito o oikaketeru so that person chasing that person ano hito o oikaketeru okay what is going on so after oikaketeru it goes straight into watashi and what you have here actually oikaketeru is describing the watashi it's almost like the sentence is saying the me that likes chasing after the the me that chases after this person is the thing that i like um i like the me that chases after the person um it could sound conceited but that's what it's trying to say um as a literal japanese translation um so yeah i hope that made sense we're going to go and look into the second clip now and um before we do that actually we're going to just see if we can play the first clip again so that you can um have a listen and follow to the subtitles as you can see that's all the <laughs> the vocabulary there um oop Okay, let's um go on to the next slide. Actually, what you can see here is what I'm going to add um in, in the Discord chat. So, you'll be able to access um more information on each of the grammar points talked in both of the dialogues with slide explanations which come with some example sentences and sometimes some things for you to try out as well. So, hopefully if there's anything you're also unsure of there's this other explanation here and it will help you to take a grammar point and recontextualize it. So for example, ni iku instead of i ni iku, you could um you could then substitute that with another um verb benkyou shi ni iku or asabi ni iku. So all these slides are intended for you to then go away with the grammar point and 
come up with some other examples. So, yeah, hopefully that should help. We'll move on to the next slide then. Um, okay, again, this is a slightly longer dialogue, but just follow along as best as you can. And if you're unsure about what's going on, just pay attention to how the characters are responding, pay attention to what things they might be pointing at, what the camera's looking at, and maybe that can help you work out what's going on in the scene. Uh, the important thing when you're trying to learn a language is to try and understand context by trying to work out what's going on in the scene, rather than understanding every single bit of dialogue that's going on. It's okay if you don't understand everything anyway. We're going to go over it again with the Japanese and the English like last time and go through and explain everything thoroughly so you have an understanding of what's going on. Hopefully we can play the video along. この絵の続きは故郷で隠すものなんだ僕の生まれた町はね冬になると遠くの果てまでが真っ白な雪に覆われるもう見渡す限りさその中に伊勢郎を立てて痛いほどの寒さを感じてこの絵を完成させたいん
Um, there are two kakus. There's kaku, which means to write, which is a different kanji. It's something along the lines of this um, kaku. Um, that means to write. I apologize for my kanji drawing. <laughs> but you can see kaku. You probably see it. It means to write, whereas this kaku is specifically to sketch or to draw. Um, dakara. Um, it's an unfinished sentence. Since it's a sketch, it's not that good. So there's nothing really to see. That's what it's implying. What's the next sentence? <laughs> Okay, let, let me follow that again with my mouth. Okay, so you got the kaku. Again, kaku, same as kaku here. Um, let's look at this part of the sentence. Kaku tsumori nanda. So tsumori means intention. Um, so again, we got that nan, it's explanatory tone. Well, when I return back home I will I intend to draw it um, kakutsumori um, so that's sumori at the end of a dictionary form of the verb when I say dictionary form of the verb it's what you'll find when you search a verb in the dictionary which has the u sound at the end um, for example um, tsukuru tsumori nanda I intend to make it for example um, tsukuru is what you'd find in the dictionary so when I say dictionary form that's what I mean so let's look at the first part of the sentence. Koko no e no tsuzuki wa. So e means painting or drawing. Koko means here. So koko no e means the drawing here, which is what the drawing that they're talking about at the moment. Um, that's what I mean. That's what I mean by looking at context and seeing what the people might be talking about. Um, tsuzuki wa means continue. The fact tsuzuku is the verb. The Suzuki makes it into a noun, just like kaku is the na is the verb and kaki is a noun. Um, so you find that pattern with a lot of verbs, not all verbs. Um, koko no e no Suzuki wa. So the continuation of this picture, um, you got kokyo de home at home. De is suggesting at that location. This is what I'm going to do. Kaku. I'm going to draw. So let's just listen to that again. Okay. Now, because you've got a bit of um, some, some weird kanji. Not weird, but, uh, you know, a um, bit more complicated. But we just put some hiragana at the top. Okay, so the next... Whoa, this is a long sentence. Don't worry, we're just going to slowly go over it. Now, I'm going to point it at it with the mouse as I play. Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, first of all, let's just... As he's speaking, we can hear pauses. So let's just try and listen to it. For example, fuyu ni naruto, but let's just go be before that. Boku no umarete machi wa ne. So, boku ga umareta machi wa ne. Umareta boku. Uh, well, I won't write boku for that, you probably heard it. Boku ga umareta machi wa ne. So, again, like the oi kakeru watashi, is umareta is describing the noun. So our sentence by itself would just be machiwa, town. However, what we've got is we've got everything before it describing this machi. So we've got boku ga umareta. So this is a sentence by itself, which is saying the town, um, saying I was born, boku ga umareta. Machi is now saying the town that I was born in. Um, Net is just something we can use for um, in s speaking. Ah, something one air. Um, it's just implying that you're going to go into an explanation. It's nothing really of a grammar point. The second sentence is. Fuyu ni Naruto. Fuyu ni Naruto. Here we have Fuyu 
winter ni naru to so ni naru means to become so when it becomes winter to when it becomes winter um yeah you can use that for other seasons um natsu ni naru to when it becomes summer or even months um kogatsu ni naru to when it becomes may blah 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 Okay, so a lot going on, so let's have a look. Yuki means snow. Yuki. I can actually just write it here, yeah. Yuki ni o a long o sound o wareru. Um yeah, that means a new mnemonic, so maybe for to cover or you can be like you're in awe of how much is covered on the ground. Oh, that'll help you remember that reading for the kanji, maybe. See, it can be fun. <laughs> so just treat it as some fun when you come up with mnemonics for kanji, and it'll make it so much easier to remember. Let's say yukini o wadu means covered in snow. Um, now let's look before that. Mashiro. It's mashiro. So shiro. Shiroi means white. Mashiro means like completely white. It's almost saying like the whitest of whites or it's just completely white. That's the implication. Um, the opposite for that would be makuro, which is pitch black. So you can sort of feel how that mat works. Okay. Ma shiro na yuki. So this is completely white snow. Um, and we've got Toku no ha Toku no hate made ga um, Toku no hate made which means um, that was as far as the eye can see we here got here corner to corner because um, hate made almost suggests something um, of a almost from one side to the other side um, sort of thing um, toku means far, so as far as you can see, this is what you you got. Maybe remember this as a set phrase. Toku no hate made ga blah blah blah. Um, something to remember for using in a sentence. Maybe let's look at the next sentence. Okay, so sa is just something that you can use in speech. Um, it's almost like sometimes saying like like it's like like when you say like in a sentence um, in speech we got more miwatasu kagiri so we got miwatasu means to kind of look over something kagiri which means limit so it's looking over limit almost um, okay so this is like as it's almost saying as far as you can see this is more of a, as far as you can see so mi watasu kagiri so the limit of what you can see is completely white in snow which is what it's saying mi watasu kagiri again remember that as a set phrase um yeah kind of right that i shouldn't have done that <laughs> um sorry what i'll do is um i'll change the the uh, um, I should have done a use a different thing in the first place. Hopefully, this should be easier to see um, for the future now. So let's go into the next um, bit of dialogue. Okay, so what have we got coming up next? Oh, okay, it's drawing on the slide. Hold on. Here we go. I'm just gonna try and see if we can just work out how we can click the video like last time. Hold on. Okay, so for some reason, the um, unfortunately our dialogue doesn't want to work today, the video. Um, so I'm just gonna have to speak it again. Uh, let's just change to a, an appropriate color. And let's continue. So, um, wait, let me just see if I'm recording. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, sono naka ni iizeru o tatete, itai hodo no samusa o kanjite, kono yo kansei sasetai nda. Okay, so 
You got commas that look at each part separately. Sono naka ni yizeru wo tatete. So, sono naka ni inside that. So we're referring to the environment, the snow, um, and in that sort of landscape. Sono naka ni yizeru yizel wo tatete. I want to set it up or stand up and tate tatsu itai hodo no samusa o kanjite. So we got this itai hodo, which means to the extent of it hurting. So hodo means extent or to the point of um, like an extreme, not like an extreme point, but not extreme extreme, but it's a sort of like a limit to the point of it hurting. So samusa is coldness. Samui means cold. When we change the e to a sa, like atsusa, atsusa would mean hotness. Atsui, hot. Samui, cold. Samusa, coldness. Kanjite, kanjiru, which means to feel. Um, also, we've got this use of tate te, kanjite. This te is just using, it, it, it almost implies, I will do this and then I will do this. Then I will do this. Um, uh, so okay. Um, so then we've got this kanse sase ru or kanse sase tai. Tai means um, I want to something that you want to. Now, specifically saying that the speaker wants to do something, not what someone else wants to. Do. I, as a speaker, this is what I want to do. If that's the case, you use tai. Kanse saseru is to be completed, something to be completed, it means. Um, so we've got kono yo. So in this environment, kono means obviously this, yo means in this, like in this way, in this way. So in this way of feeling the cold till it hurts and um, setting up my easel in the um, sono nakani, which is the um, the environment, the landscape of being in the snow. This is how I want to complete the painting. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's just put some can say can say. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> um, so next slide. Whoa! Again, a lot of dialogue, but we can break it down. あの大きくてまっ白な風景の中にいるとまるで遠い星の世界にいるような不思議な気持ちになるんだ。So let's break this down. Now what you will notice when I break sentences down, I will look towards the end of the sentence because Japanese um the main clause you might find towards the end than the beginning. So for example, I'm looking at fuke, even nakairu. That's the main clause that I'm looking at, nakairu. That's the simplest clause. Inside, while I, I am inside, iru is referring to niru, means located in. So, located inside. And then from there, we can find out, well, located inside what? Fuke, which is means, you know, this landscape. Well, what sort of landscape is it? Ano okikute mashiro na fuke. So we've got this, um, um, I had you before, Karen. Fu, long u sound, um, k. Um, so we've got this long, um, describing thing, but notice how I went backwards to try and find out what's going on. So ano o, again, o, just like the covering, o, it's so big you're in o. Again, you could use that same. Um, mnemonic again. O wareru, o ki, o kikute. So we got o kikute, big, mashiro, white, or completely white. Now, fuke no naka ni iru to when I'm in all of this, maru de toi hoshi no sekai ni iru yona. Now we said yo means like it's like something. So again, like in this way or in this way it feels like that's how your can be used um let's go back so marude all around me toi hoshi no zekai ni iru again 
Niru, Niru, Niru means located in. So it feels like we're located in a Toi Hoshi no Sekai. Toi Hoshi. Um, a far away star, Toi Hoshi, or far away planet. Hoshi can mean planet or star. Um, not Sekai. Sekai means world. So it's like another world on another planet sort of thing. It feels otherworldly, which is why the translation here is in a different world. Fushigi na kimochi ni naru in da. Again, ni naru means to become. So it feels like a wondrous feeling. Um, fushigi, ni, fushigi na kimochi. A wonderful feeling. A strange feeling. In a good way. It's surreal. That's what fushigi implies. Um, so I hope that made sense. We can break your na is connecting this part of the sentence with this part of the sentence because it's it's this otherworldly feeling that feels like this other world um, and this na is what we use for na adjectives to connect um, a na, an adjective with a um, a noun that's it <laughs> I was trying to find the word noun um, so for example mashiro na you've got the na here as well this is a um, and that adjective is connecting that is connecting the adjective with the verb if it's got e at the end and it's an adjective then you won't need to include a na the e um, those are e adjectives they just use the e you don't need to use a na to connect the adjective to the noun um, for example in its um, dictionary form oki oki ku becomes oki or key, um, you spell that like or key, um, and this e means that we don't have to add that because this is going to help connect us to the um, the the, uh, the noun. <laughs> I keep getting that wrong. Or key, or key again, a long vowel sound. Or key. Here's or kiku, or kiku te. And what we've done is basically we've got rid of the or key and we've changed it to ku, or kiku te. And the reason why we've done that is like the te is almost describing this comma this comma this like then comma then but in this case it's like it's big and it's completely white there's it's implying a bit of a break in between the um, adjectives describing the fuke um hope that made sense ah itte mitai watashi mo um watashi mo itte mitai it might be the other way around, um, but here it's kind of flipped. Ite mitai, ite mitai, mitai means I would like to try that. Um, tabete mitai, I would like to try and eat that. I would like to try that piece of food, um, something like that. That's what mitai means when you add it to an end of a te verb like that. Watashi mo, I also. Mo means also. I'd also love to go there. Okay. So then, heiwa ga otosure tara taskete mo mo sorry. So then, heiwa ga otosure tara taskete moratta ore ni kanazu kimi wa shoutai shi yo. So, yeah. I was trying to do it in a in a in that cool voice that the the voice actually actor does for this guy, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> So let's break down the sentence again. Um, we've got the comma, so that's our break. But before that, we've got so done it. Mm. Um, so done it. Could be like, yeah, right. But in this case, it seems like so done it. Mm. It's, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's definitely a place that you want to go. So done it. Itte mitai. He's responding to itte mitai. So done it. So done it. Ah, heiwa ga tozeretara, tasukete moratta ore ni. Kanarasu, kimi wa shoutai shio. So, there we go, I did it. <laughs> kimi wa shoutai shio. Shoutai shio comes from shoutai suru, which means to invite. So, I would like to invite you. Kanarasu, again, I will, definitely, definitely. That's almost, it's almost like she, he's promising. Kanarasu, kimi wa shoutai shio. Um, so, shio is like, let's go there. It's saying, 
we'll, we'll go we'll go there we'll I'll, we'll I'll invite you I'll will do that I will invite you that's what she always implying Kimi wa shotai shi okay let's look backwards um so kanarazu ore ni is suggesting as a thanks as a thanks for what let's look back and find out so taskete moratta because you saved me as a thanks for saving me taskete moratta um kimi wa kanarazu shotai shi o again this kimi wa and kanarazu can be flipped so it could be kimi wa kanarazu shotai shi o it doesn't really matter um before that hewa ga otozuretara so when peace hewa peace um visits otozureru means to visit o to zu otozuretara when peace visits tasukete moratta ore ni kanarazu kimi wa shotai shi o okay um so notice how i broke that sentence down Now let's just look at some other things just to break things down. So otozureru means to visit, tara means if peace visits. It's a condition. If peace visits a condition. So if the condition is um there's peace, um during this time there's war when this this is set. It's I think it's this particular scene set during the Second World War. So when peace comes that's the condition so we use otosure tara when that condition happens um and then this is could this sentence could go from hewa ga otosure tara straight to kanarazu kimi wa shotai shi o but it's going from hewa ga otosure tara and it's explaining as a thanks for saving me tasukete moratta ore ni um i guess she said ore means thanks um tasukete moratta um taskeru means to to help um Taskaru, taskeru. There's a big difference. I might just quickly um break that down. Taskeru. Taskaru. So, taskeru means you're doing it. Taskeru means it's a help. Um so ha, does that make sense? Probably not. So, let me give you an example. Taskeru. The person is doing the help. Taskaru it means oh it would be a help. So for example um if you were going to say ah um um shitara um so shitara taskaru it it's almost saying if you did that it would be a big help. It's not saying you're helping me but it's almost play in saying that the help is coming of its own. Taskaru it's it's coming it's automatically going to happen the help whereas taskeru means you're as a speaker or the person is actively doing the helping um taskete moratta suggesting the girl actively helped taskete moratta you can't use taskatte moratta it just wouldn't make sense um because what well, it would imply something just helped and we we specifically say the girl helped her helped him sorry taskete moratta so as a thanks for helping me moratta um you know almost like received something um yeah okay um let's go on to the i think it's the final slide uh, maybe ah oh, here we go we've got some um we've got some words and we've got some examples exact um for example you can see some examples here of um some sentences for you to practice later ha mangetsu um literally full moon oh oh can we um ah tasukatta <laughs> that helps a lot you see i've just used that um and we've clicked right on the right right part マンゲツはしたじゃない。マンゲツ。It's a full moon. We don't have to say it's a full moon like マンゲツです。マンゲツ。Oh, full moon. Um, マンゲツはしたじゃない。でも僕はこの時の月が一番好きだ。マンゲ
十四日目の月にはまだ明日がある明日という希望が僕はまた旅に出るでも怪我はまだ仲間がマシューで戦っている I'll just go back、uh, just to show you some of the lines.、Um, here you go, Mangetsu a s h i t a d a n a Okay, Mangetsu a a s h i t a So, full moon is tomorrow.、Um, okay, Demo, Boko wa kono toki no ski ga ichiban ski da. Interesting.、Um, here, there's similar pronunciation. Ski. Ski, to ski, to ski. <laughs> <laughs> um, here equals ski. This equals ski. Ski. Tsu. Tsu. There's a difference. Tsu, ki, ski. Um, ski. What you notice is that the u is usually silent, silent when you're pronouncing u. Ski. Ski, ski, ski. Okay, so, but, demo, boku wa kono toki no machi ga. But, sorry, I'm reading that as machi. <laughs> boku wa kono toki no tsuki ga ichiban ski da.、Um, so, let's break this sentence down again, going from here. Tsuki ga ichiban ski da. Moon is, I like that the best. Tsuki ga ichiban ski da. What sort of moon? Kono toki no tsuki. The moon, this moon. At this time,、um, and it's I, the Boku, it's me who likes that.、Um, so that's what we've got. This could be a pattern, ga ichiban skida. So you say your noun of what you like the best. A kohi, kono kisa ten no kohi ga ichiban skida. Coffee at this cafe is the best coffee.、Um, yeah. That's how you'd say Ichibanski. So we can remember that as a sentence pattern. So we have、um, we have、um, Mangetsu wa Tsuki.、Um, su- <laughs> tsugi. Tsugi. Again, this is a lot of、um, similar pronunciations here.、Um, and because Japanese, I suppose, has this. Hold on. Has this.、Um, so few sort of phonemes compared to something like English. Um, you have to really be careful how you pronounce certain things. So let's just、um, put that. Sorry, I put two. I've messed it up. Yep.、Um, this equals tsugi. Gi. Tsuki. Tsugi. Difference. Tsugi no hi. <laughs> tsugi no hi.、Um, and guess what? Tsugi no hi kara.、Um, Kakete shimao kere do. Um, okay, so、um, let's break that down. This keredo comes from keredomo.、Um, you hear it in speech often as kedo. But, so that's where I'm going to break the sentence. So we've got two sentences here. So we've got, Mangetsu wa tsuki no hi kara kakete shimao. And then we've got, Um, okay, so let's say he kara kakete shima. So,、um, the next day, or it, it probably makes more sense with sugi no hi. So, the next day kara、um, kakete shima. Well, what's lacking? What is it that's lacking? Which is what kakete in this case means it's not there. Man gets. The full moon wa, mangetsu wa, tsuki no hi kara, from the next day, from, kara is from, um, kakete shimao keredo, it will be lacking, but, ju yokame no tsuki ni wa, tsuki ni wa, mada ashita ga aru, um, so the tsuki ni wa, moon, what sort of moon? The 14th day. Um, now, what we have is 10, obviously 10, 4, he, so 14th day. Me is in, in indicating 
where on the timeline it is. You could say Ju Yoka, which would be day 14, or it could just mean the 14th of a particular month. But this Met is almost giving a interval to it to suggest that this is the 14th day that he's... Where was it? Well, well, what is it? The 14th day of what? The 14th day that he's out in hiding? Maybe that's what it's suggesting. Uh, maybe that's suggesting that he's been out for 14 days, AK. Okay. Two weeks. Um, so this 14th day moon, Niwa, which is the next day, the, the Suki no Hikara, Mada Ashtagaru, means that there's still tomorrow, Mada Ashtagaru. And this leads on to the next sentence, which is Ashita toyu kiboga. Um, this um, means Ashita. Tomorrow, toyu means means, like means something. Toyu kibo, kibo, which means hope. Um, so, oh, sorry, I've read that completely. So, tomorrow means hope. Um, so if there's Mada Ashtagaru means there's still a tomorrow and if there's still a tomorrow there's still hope which is what it's saying. Boku wa mata tabi ni deru. So again tabi ni deru means to set out again um, on a trip. Tabi means trip. Like um, a tabi cat sets out on a trip. Maybe you want to use that as a mnemonic for tabi. <laughs> Boku wa mata tabi ni deru. Again. Mata again, again. I have to leave out again. Um, yeah, so he uses Boku quite a lot, actually, interestingly. Um, actually, I've not carried on playing this, have I? <laughs> Let me go back. ケガはまだ。仲間がマッシュで戦っている。え、ほう、でも、ボット。ケガはまだ。またまだ。ディフェンス。まだ which is suggesting it's an uncom- incomplete sentence. Mada um, oh, you're still injured. You're still wounded. Um, ah, and then he says, Nakama, my comrades, my friends, um, are Manshu de, in Manshu fighting. So again, they're at the place. And what are they doing at the place? They are fighting. Now, um, context-wise, in Manchuria is um, a stronghold that the Japanese captured um, as the Japanese were expanding their empire. Manchuria is a region in China. Um, Japan captured that, among other places such as Beijing, um, as they were expanding their empire. And because this is during World War II, they're probably fighting against um, forces from, say, the Soviet Union who were trying to recapture back the land that the Japanese got. So this is why he wants to go back to kind of fight to defend the Japanese Empire. So that's the context with that. Hey there, Mangetsu. There we go. Yay, we got a book. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the final, the final sentence or the final slide. And then hopefully, yeah, we'll be done. And we might watch the clip again. So. Um, okay, so hold on. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's just skip, skip, skip. Will it load? Okay. Um, which is um, our paint um, 
yep, our watercolor paint, inogu paint or whatever. To fude um, is our brush, paint and brushes. Ja, yaku ni tachi so ni nai kedo. Not very helpful. What's going on? <laughs> yaku ni tatsu means to be useful. Um, yaku ni tachi so means it seems to be useful. Ni nai means it seems to not be useful. So tachi ni so ni nai means not, not. Actually, this is just instead of a kanji, you could just put the nai. Tachi so ni nai kedo ne. Um, yeah, but uh, but it doesn't seem to be useful. Enogu to fude ja yaki ni tachi so ni nai kedo ne. And then let's carry on. So, kore, kai, kai is question. This, this, ichiban taisetsu na mono o akeru kagi sa. So, let's look from here. Kagi, it's a key. Kore kai, kagi desu. It's a, it's a key. Um, akeru kagi sa. Kore kai, the key that opens. Opens what? Kore kai. Ichiban taisetsu na mono o akeru kagi sa. You see how I'm looking backwards to see what is explained to me. What is it that it's talking about? Ichiban, like we said before with Ichiban ski, it's the most. Ichiban taisetsu, it the most important. Taisetsu means important. Um, na mono thing, most important thing. Um, again, we've got this na because this is not got an e at the end. Taisetsu. So we add na to connect the adjective with the na. Taisetsu na mono o akeru kagisa. Um, this question mark. So that's what it is. That's what it means. Um, ichiban taisetsu na mono. The most important thing. Well, let's hear us say. Ichiban taisetsu na mono. Arigato chioko. Arigato otoko. <laughs> Atete goran. Um, goran. In this case, it's sort of not common speech in normal conversation. This guy seems to speak quite poetic, I notice. Um, goran could be used in business settings to say, Ah, goran de kudasai. Amite goran de kudasai. To say, please, can you take a look at this? So it's almost saying, take, wanna take? In this tone, because atete goran, wanna take, atete ateru, means ateru means to guess. So, wanna take a guess? Sorry, the my power said that I've run out of battery, and I'm not running out of battery. It's just that it's just that my laptop has problems. <laughs> well, um, anyway, yakusoku, yakusok, the yoki sok that you use to make a promise. Ah, uh, wakaranai wa? I don't know. Demo, madoshi nai de? Don't tell me. Um, I don't know. Again, oshi nai de. Um, nakanai de, oshienai de. Please don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, so this is a break. Wakaranai wa. Wa is very um, feminine, but not feminine as in any female say, says it. It's very old speech or very sort of upper class sort of a particle that you'd use as a woman. Or, or, or if you want to present yourself as womanly, not just feminine, feminine like or girly, but a woman, a lady like, you might use, you'd use wa at the end of a sentence. Wa karanai wa. She's trying to present herself as an older lady, or because of the time of the time that this is set in, it's quite old, sort of, not nineteen forty, so it's an old time period. Wa karanai wa. Um, guys won't use wa <laughs> at the end of a sentence. Well. They depends on the context. It depends on the context, but it won't be used in the same meaning as this for sure. Demo, mada, mada again, mada. Still, don't tell me. Oshie nai de. 
Ashte Madeni. So until tomorrow, Ashte Madeni, Shukudai Nishte. So Nishte comes from Nisuru, which means to decide on something. So if you have noun plus Nisuru, it means to decide on something. In this case, Shukudai Nisuru means to decide on making this homework. Shukudai Nishte, let's make it homework. This shte suggests, um, let's like do it, do it. Like for example, mite, mite, look, look. Shukudai ni shite. Let's make it homework. Let's do it homework. So it's it's implying a almost a command, but not a command as such. But it's saying let's do this. Um, in yakusoku yo, promise, yeah. Um, so let's just see the vocabulary here. Yaki, yaki ni taichi, useful. Taisetsu, important. Atete, guess. Oshiete, tell me. Shukudai, homework. Okay, yeah. So thank you for watching. I um, hope that you managed to get through everything and I hope it made sense. Um, I will be posting a PowerPoint in Discord with some of the notes for the grammar points. So if you're unsure, you can check that. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments on this YouTube video. And um, we can go into a part that you're unsure of in a bit more detail in the future. But um, yeah, um, like I said, I hope it helps. Now, obviously, you're not going to understand everything or remember everything in the video, but that's not the point. What I want you to do is to try and look at like certain grammar points that I might have explained and then try and recontextualize them in a different context. Maybe practice speaking to yourself. For example, ichiban skida. Okay, what is what? What sort of things do I like? Ah, um, for example, um, ongaku o kiku no koto wa ichiban suki da. I love, I, the best thing is listening to music. And you're practicing speaking. So try and take things from the video, not just look at it and read it, but try and engage with the material and then try and practice it in your own time. And that will really help you as well. So thank you for sticking around. Um, if you made it to this end of this video, um, I'm really grateful. And if you have a film that you'd like to suggest to look at some dialogue or scenes or even an anime, just um, make a suggestion and we can look into it. Okay, so let's finish off with um, listening to the whole clip and see if you can remember some of the lines by what we've just gone through and see if you can remember some of the meanings we discussed. Again, this will be without subtitles, so good luck. いい。きっと明月は明日だな。でも僕はこの時の月が一番好きだ。満月は次の日からかけてしまうけれど、14日目の月にはまだ明日がある。明日という希望が。僕はまた旅に出る。でも怪我はまだ。仲間が満州で戦っている。目の
しちゃいなさいよ好きな男の方がいるんでしょう。ごい<笑>私 Okay, there's a little bit at the end that I didn't explain, but I'll leave that for you to try and work out. What do you think is going on based on the expressions and maybe some of the words that you've heard?、Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.